Ladies and gentlemen, this is your AEW Fight for the Fallen review on Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. I am Joseph Conlon here with, of course, my AEW co-host, Wesley Williams, man. We got, what a night, insane night in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we talked about it earlier, man. Uh, before we went on the uh, review on here, I think this past July was AEW's best month since February of pre-COVID. Tonight's show was freaking insane, and AEW's riding a high momentum right now, man. But, dude, it's been a week. How the hell are you tonight? Man, I'm and, uh, exhausted. Uh, those two hours really flew by in the best way possible, like they do every single week, man. I mean... What a show tonight all around. I mean, lots of excitement. I mean, AEW continue to bring the hits like we talk about every single week, man. I mean, they continue to bring the hits with the shows. And like you mentioned, uh, this, yeah, definitely was by far probably their best uh, month of uh, AEW Dynamite shows since pre-pandemic with the uh, February shows going into AEW Revolution back in 2020. Uh, what, a, what a month. What a show tonight. I mean, this was just all around fantastic. Oh, absolutely, man. No doubt about it. Charlotte, North Carolina, they brung it. We had a lot of crazy things to happen tonight. Uh, we had the second labor of Jericho, which was Chris Jericho versus Nick Gage in a death match. And I got to give it to Chris Jericho, man. I was, I, 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 there's no doubt in my mind how much I respected him. Uh, going into this match, but I have even more respect for him after this match tonight because he went in there knowing what was going to happen to him against a guy like Nick Gage. And this is the same story as Matt Cardona. If you guys did not watch the GCW show this past weekend, uh, Matt Cardona has no experience with deathmatch wrestling, went in there, bled like a fucking pig, and he even won the GCW World Championship. I'm going to say it really quickly here, but any wrestler would take one-tenth of the heat that Matt Cardona got Saturday night and would absolutely love it. So props to Cardona and Chris Jericho for bleeding like an absolute pig tonight, man. What an unbelievable main event. Freaking insane. Absolutely. I mean, I I already respect uh, Chris Jericho immensely, man. He's my second favorite wrestler of all time. And uh, this really just up the echelon of, of, of Chris Jericho tonight with this death match with uh, Nick Gage. I mean, this was this was absolutely wild. I mean, I, I, it's hard to believe that Chris Jericho was competing in a death match in 2021, man. I mean, what is pro wrestling anymore? But uh, Chris Jericho went in there, man. I mean, massive props to him, man. I, I gained even more respect for him after tonight with uh, that war he went through with Nick Gage, man. He somehow, some way, he survived uh, MDK. And, uh, man, what, what a war it was. <laughs> In 2021 on TNT, bro, we saw light tubes, gl a, a glass shield, and a pizza cutter, man. Who who would have thought that we'd see that stuff on TNT? I'm sure we'll have crying SJWs on social media tomorrow morning, but you know what? Screw them. Who cares? This match was freaking insane, and we'll talk about that match when we get to the main event. And Jericho's third labor has been announced. I don't know if it's going to happen next week or not, but we have his third labor. But thank you guys for joining us here tonight on the review. We very much appreciate it. AEW fight for the fallen. If you guys have that already before we talk about tonight's show, be sure to go ahead and check out uh, the Monday Night Raw review from Monday night. And last night's NXT review here on the channel, man. Be sure to go ahead and check them out. And I want to give a shout out to my NXT co-host, Mr. Cam, excuse me, Mr. Cameron Johnson, who was actually at the Bojangles Coliseum tonight for AEW Fight for the Fallen. Shout out to him because he was at the show tonight. I'm sure he had an absolute blast at the show, and. Uh, I want to give him a quick shout out to him, but Wes, are you ready to talk about Fight for the Fallen, dude? So much to talk about, man. Just like every other week with AW Dynamite, let's get right into Fight for the Fallen. You're damn right, dude. We opened up with the most anticipated match of the night, at least for me. 
I was super invested and hyped in this match. You guys see it on social media. I was lobbying and showing my support for my boys, Adam Hangman Page and The Dark Order. We opened up the show with two absolute fire entrances, dude. We had the, the lights off. We had Dark Order um, wearing cow- a cowboy mask purple cowboy mix and then we had adam hangman page wearing dark order inspired gear which was actually um which was actually teased on bte this past monday for those of you who don't watch bte but um and then we had the elite coming out with the basketball squad introducing one by one basketball attires man this was just very cool stuff man and it, no no cheap a cheap plug to me but it really gave you a big fight feel like a type of entrance you would see at an NXT takeover or a WrestleMania absolutely yeah i mean this was just uh, uh, your regular weekly episode of AEW Dynamite and it somebody uh, i mentioned on twitter you know uh it, it felt like the 2014 to 2018 NXT takeover like feel you know it gave you that overall feel like you were like watching a takeover esque type of show and that's what he, i mean just by those entrances alone that's what the feeling that it gave you i mean amazing entrances all around the, the promo package before for the hangman of the dark orders entrance was fantastic as well man i mean both entrances already got you so excited to watch this match i mean that's how you kick off a show that's exactly how you kick off a pro wrestling show you have entrances like that that will get people so excited i mean Hangman and the Dark Order coming out with, you know, the Dark Order uh, colored gear. And then you got Kenny and the Elite coming out with Space Jam inspired gear with the basketballs and everything. I mean, it's just, it all meshed so, so well together. And I freaking loved every, every second of it. Same, dude. But unfortunately, what I did not love was the fact that my boys lost Adam Hangman Page and Dark Order. They unfortunately took the L to the Elite tonight. But I would be a stupid idiot. If I did not say how freaking fantastic this 10-man tag was, it had everything, man. It really did. Um, Hangman felt like the that underdog scrapping from the floor when it came down to Hangman and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Unfortunately, at the end, Omega got Hangman Page into the one-winged angel, and he pinned him. Uh, Hangman did not kick out of the one-winged angel. And this means that Hangman Page and the Dark Order are not going to get their shots, man, for the t- tag titles and the world title. Uh, very sad by that, but um, this was a fantastic 10-man tag. I am uh, I'm not going to take away from that, but I know you got a lot to say about this, so I want to hear what you have to say first, and then I'm going to follow up behind you. Yeah, I mean, the first half hour of the show was dedicated to this 10-man tag. I mean, it was just great all the way through i mentioned on twitter it had a mix of just about everything it had uh, had storytelling it had comedy it had intensity and overall it was just straight up fun and when you when you get book a pro wrestling match i mean those are the kinds of pro wrestling matches that you book and and it turns out really well it's a recipe for success because when you mix in a lot of different elements and you do it in the right way you have yourself a, a grand success right there right in front of you i feel like that's what we got here with this 10 man tag arguably the best match of the night uh, probably right behind uh, the main event, which we will get into in just a little bit. But uh, great, great way to open Dynamite. And uh, unfortunately, uh, D- the Dark Order and Hangman come up short, but the Elite do come out the victors. And I had mentioned, I, I made a pitch on Twitter last night, a very long pitch about this match tonight and going into All Out on September 5th. I mentioned that, you know, I know we're all expecting the Dark Order and Hangman to win this match, but. You know, I made a pitch that I think the, the Elite would win uh, this match. I know exactly what happened. And we wouldn't see uh, Page versus Omega yet. Neither will we see the Dark Order versus the Young Bucks for the tag titles. Although I do believe those matches will definitely be coming. With Hangman and, uh, and uh, Omega, I feel like they're going to prolong that until full gear, which would make more sense to do it at full gear in St. Louis because it would be one whole year since the last time Hangman and Omega went one-on-one in the finals of that world title eliminator where, where we saw Omega, of course, beat Hangman to gain a shot at the world title and, of course, win the world title from John Moxley. And so I feel like storyline-wise, it makes more sense to prolong it until then. 
I know it's unfortunate we won't see it at all out, but, you know, patience, patience. You know, we will get Hangman and Omega. It's definitely going to happen. The Dark Order will definitely get their shots at the tag titles eventually. It won't be right now, but the other time definitely will come in, whether it's John Silver and Alex Reynolds or Evil Uno and Sue Grayson. Either one of those two teams you book to become tag team champions one day, I'm not going to be upset about it, but it just won't happen right now. But uh, in my pitch, too, I also mentioned how the end sequence would be Hangman three on one against Kenny and the Bucks. And that's exactly what we got there. So, you know, it's like I, I figured going in this, we'd have like really a lot of tie ins with the storytelling. And uh, that's exactly what we got in Hangman. The, I mean, the, 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 you know, comeback he was mustering up, man, the, the roar of the Charlotte crowd being all behind him, man. It was such, so beautiful to see. I mean, you could clearly tell that Adam Page is such a naturally over baby face. And that's what you want. I mean, that's, that's how you get somebody invested in your babies. You have them, you know, fight, fight, fight until the very end. But, you know, of course, unfortunately, he came up short and the elite do win, which means Hangman and the Dark Girl will not be getting their respective world or tag team title shots, but they will happen. And, uh, you know, I mentioned my little pitch there for a uh, full gear. I do believe Hangman Omega will eventually be set up for full gear in November. Yeah. Now, if Paige is not going to get the shot at All Out, the question is, what is going to happen with Paige at, at All Out? What's he going to do? What is Omega going to do at All Out is the even bigger question. Because last week, we're going to talk about this in a little bit when we get to Darby Allen, but we both agreed that if Aangman and the Dark Order were not going to win tonight, that Darby Allen would be getting that shot at Omega at All Out. But clearly, I don't think that's going to happen now. So there's really... There's really not many options out there, and I don't know who's going to face Omega at All Out. I mean, you have, um, who can you do really besides Orange Cassidy? Maybe I, I don't know. There's really nobody out there to face Kenny Omega right now, unless you bring in Brian. But I don't think Brian's going to come in at All Out because I think Brian is going to be saved for um, Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York. So I really can't think of any other name to challenge Kenny outside of Orange Cassidy right now. That's the only guy I can think of. I know earlier you said Christian Cage, but I don't really know how I would feel about Christian getting a world title match on pay-per-view in front of one of AEW's biggest shows and biggest crowds of the entire... I don't think that would go well with a lot of people. And it certainly wouldn't go well with me either. But um, I really don't know who challenges Omega at all out. Yeah, yeah, it, it, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I feel like whatever AEW comes up with, it won't disappoint. I feel like they're definitely going to set something up for Omega at all out where it's definitely going to be pay-per-view worthy for sure. I could see Orange Cassidy being the one to do it. He, he's been on a nice little win streak on his R and he, he just overcame the blade uh, just last week at fire fest night too. And so, and he, and he's in the top five and he's not, he hadn't been do his one-on-one -on -one match with Omega. He, he got a triple threat match at double or nothing as we saw with pack involved. So I think, you know, Orange Cassidy maybe being the one to, to face Omega and all out. I feel like, would definitely be a main event worthy for a pay-per-view for sure. And I, I feel like that may be one of your best routes to go with. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I'm not really sure who you go with. But we'll see we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. But like I said, I don't think AEW is gonna disappoint us. <laughs> yeah. Um Hangman in the Dark Order's time will come. It's it sucks that they didn't win tonight. But I, if anything I do know is that I, I, I'm a smart wrestling fan and I do know that their time will come very, very soon. So, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But the Elite got the win tonight against the Dark Order. And next, very quickly, we had the FTW celebration. Taz on this huge podium. We had the FTW band out there for Ricky Starks. Um, excuse me. Uh, there was no powerhouse hops tonight. I don't know where he was, but he was absent from tonight's show. Hopefully everything's all right. But Starks basically cut a promo. Brian Cage came out, destroyed a couple of the marching band FTW guys. One in the ring, one face-to-face -face with Starks. Starks threw flowers at him, and then he ran away. So I guess it was okay for what it was. I, don't, I have no idea where this thing is going. Are we going to get another match with Brian Cage and Starks? And if so, when? 
I don't I don't really know, dude. But it was all right for what it was. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, it was very brief. Uh, not really much to take out of it. Uh, you know, Starks is a heck of a promo. I will say that. I mean, the guy knows how to deliver his lines, and I feel like he's definitely going to be a, a future champion, a future world champion in AEW as uh, as the future does progress. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure where you go with this feud next with Brian Cage and Ricky Starks, or and Brian Cage and Team FTW. I really don't know where you go with it. Uh, no Hobbs tonight, like you mentioned. Not sure where Powerhouse Hobbs was, but. Uh, I, I just kind of feel like we could get Cage versus Hobbs, maybe it all out, maybe. Um, I don't know if you, I mean, I'm not really sure if that would be an all out worthy match because, you know, Hobbs has been impressive on like the AW Dark and Elevation and stuff. But, you know, I mean, this could be a really good test for him to go up against Brian Cage. But uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get Cage versus Starks again, but we'll have to see as it, uh, as it progresses. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like as time will go on, you know, I don't know if Brian Cage will totally work as a babyface and on his own. We'll have to see. I mean, Brian Cage, of course, we all know is is great in the ring. I mean, we we have all seen that. I mean, he's the machine. You know, the guy is a, it does insane things in the ring for a guy his size. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like the, with Starks having so much charisma, I feel like people gravitate him to, uh, towards him more than they do Brian Cage. So even though Starks is the heel in this feud. I'm not sure if many people will pull for uh, Brian Cage, but we'll we'll have to see what happens. I just kind of that's kind of the feeling I get, you know, right away with this is like I don't know if Brian Cage is really going to get over so much in this feud. I was kind of wondering at that as well because the crowd really didn't give a shit when Brian Cage came out there. He got new music and everything, and he didn't. The crowd did not really care. I think they were still in effect after seeing their cowboy get pinned in that 10-man tag. But that that's just me right there. So it was all right for what it was, I guess. But Wesley, we saw an appearance tonight from Hiroshi Tanahashi, a New Japan Pro Wrestling legend, man. Who would have thought that tonight, going into tonight's show, we were going to see Hiroshi Tanahashi on tonight's show? Holy shit, man. Unbelievable. He cut a promo, short promo, saying he's won multiple world titles in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he would have to like he would love to have one more title reign before he retires. But something he's never had, and he's had a he's had an eye on, is the IWGP United States Championship. And he said, "The winner of tonight's match, I am next for the IWGP Championship." And we're not going to spoil the results for you. Uh, before, before we'll get to that match very soon, but I just took a quick peek over on Twitter, and it was announced that that match is going to happen, unfortunately not in AEW, but it's going to happen August 14th at New Japan Resurgence, so that is your date for that match to happen, but man, that Forbidden Door is slowly but surely opening, dude, it is opened for business, as MVP likes to say. Absolutely, absolutely, my friend. I mean, it's amazing. Hiroshi Tanahashi, the ace, go ace, on AEW television in 2021. This year is wild, man. This is a wild year in pro wrestling. That forbidden door, like you mentioned, slowly but surely widening up more and more. We're seeing all this, t- all these talents coming in from all these different promotions. Impact, New Japan, AAA, you name it, AEW's got it. Tony Khan, all the tricks coming out of his sleeve he's he's brushing them out brush them out one by one by one and we're going to continue to see that in the coming weeks in the coming months i freaking love it hiroshi tanahashi on aw television unfortunately uh he faces the winner for the iwgb us title match tonight unfortunately it won't happen on dynamite it won't happen in AEW. but i do believe tanahashi eventually will wrestle on AEW soil and we might even see some more big name new japan talent showing up on AEW soil very very soon or, you know, who knows? We'll have to see what the future holds. But, man, I'm loving it. I'm loving every second of this. Uh, wait, time out. So we, we got to – I had to bring this up because earlier we had Mox cut a promo, and he's talking to how Tanahashi was ducking him. And he was doing a bunch of open challenges for everybody in New Japan, and Tanahashi did not answer it, but he's answering this challenge from Lance Archer. And – he is teasing a match. And what's what's Mox doing in, in AEW right now? Not really much of anything. 
What if we do Moxley versus Hiroshi Tanahashi at All Out? I think that would be fucking awesome. And I really think that would be a great idea to do. Absolutely. I would not be against that whatsoever. I'm 100% on board with the Tanahashi Moxley. Moxley did cut a promo later in the night, as we saw. And he, he wants Tanahashi, man. But Tanahashi, like you mentioned, he keeps ducking him. Keeps ducking him. He keeps ducking a fight. And Moxley's looking for a fight. You know John Moxley's always looking for a fight. But he also mentioned how he's opening that forbidden door to anybody who wants to step foot in the ring with him. So, you know, it could be Tanahashi. It could be another name from New Japan. It could be an Okada. could be an Ibushi. I don't know. I feel like eventually those guys could show up in AEW. We don't know. AEW is so unpredictable these days. You can't predict it, man. It's just it's so beautiful to see. It's like it just leaves you with so much hunger and so much thirst for wanting more. And it's just amazing to see. But it's Tanahashi versus Moxley. If it happens all out, I'm a happy man. I don't think anybody's going to be disappointed by that. I think that would be a show stealer, no doubt about it. Absolutely, man. And Mox, like I said, Mox isn't really doing much in AEW right now. So I feel like that match right there, or a match with Gage, I just don't think would happen. But uh, Mox versus Tanahashi, I think, would be a, a awesome decision to do at All Out. But next, we had a very anticipated tag team match going into tonight's show. We had Santana and Ortiz going up against FTR. And unfortunately, um, I felt like this match was definitely cut short. There was an audible call because if you guys saw after the match, camera went right over to about four doctors and, uh, and Cash Wheeler. He was bleeding all up from his arm, and you could see a bone sticking out from his wrist, man. You don't want to see stuff like that. That shit sucks. I feel truly bad for Cash Wheeler. The match definitely was cut short because of it, and the match was actually... Um, the match, when it was over, it was, it was actually starting to get really good, so... And that's what I was actually starting to get into it. But then it felt like just Dax hit a pile driver on Ortiz, and that was the match. So I really hope this is not the last time we see these two teams face each other because um, I know they could do much better. There, there was an audible call in this match, so clearly this match was stopped for the, for the help for Cash Wheeler. And FTR got the win, which is something I did not expect. But um, I still think that um, I still think that Santana and Ortiz, now that the Dark Order lost in the ten man earlier, I now think that Santana and Ortiz are probably going to be the tag team who should take the tag team titles off of the Young Bucks. I think that needs to happen. And to be honest with you, as much as they needed this win. I don't think it's going to bother them that much. I really, I think they're going to be fine taking this loss here. But, man, first and foremost, I just hope Cash Wheel is okay. You don't want to see stuff like that. You don't want to see bones pop out of bodies. It looked really bad, and I hope he's not out for a long time, man. That shit sucked. Yeah, it's just, it's horrible to see, man. You don't want to see anybody get hurt out there. I mean, you know, pro, pro wrestling, it's, it's nothing to joke around about, you know. I mean, it's it's a serious sport, and it's a, there's a lot of – a lot of things that go into it, man, and uh, and uh, prayers out to um, to Cash Wheeler, man. I, I hope and pray uh, he has a speedy recovery, and I'm hoping uh, you know the injury won't take him out for too long. Uh, it, it did look really nasty when the camera panned over to it on the outside. Uh, you clearly an audible was called here. Uh, you know, Dax hits a, a, a brain buster on uh, Ortiz, and that's the match. Uh, it sucks because this is one of the matches I was most looking forward to going into fight for the fallen, but. Uh, you know, injuries happen. It's, it's a thing that happens in all sports, man, and that includes pro wrestling. And uh, it's just the price you pay when you when you get into this profession. But, uh, of course, you don't want to see anybody get hurt out there. Um, but, yeah, prayers out to Couch Wheeler. I hope he recovers and uh, hope to see FTR in full force again, uh, hopefully in the near future again. Um, but, yeah, Santana Ortiz, like you mentioned, Joseph, those are your ideal guys to take the titles of the Young Bucks. Uh, hope, I don't know if it happens at all out. Uh you know, they did take the L tonight, so I don't know if how that's going to affect him much. I mean, FTR, I, I, I don't think, is going to be uh, competing together, uh, you know, anytime soon, unfortunately. But, uh, 
Tanteo Ortiz, I definitely want them to be the guys to take the titles of the Bucks. I mean, that's – and yeah, all out really is the ideal place to do it. So we'll have to see how, how this pans out. Um, clearly things, you know, happened suddenly and it went audible was called. So we'll have to see how they, uh, they play it out. But, uh, you know, again, prayers for wheel cash wheeler and, uh, we'll, we'll have to see where this goes. I just thought about it in my head. I'd still think that Santana and Ortiz are going to take the titles from the young bucks, but just very quickly, would you rather see them win the titles at all out or in New York city? That's a tough question. That's a tough question. You know, maybe you could prolong it until the Grand Slam Dynamite. That'd be it'd give you a couple more weeks, maybe. I mean, All Out, I feel like with All Out, you know, it would be two years, two years since San Jose Ortiz made their debut in AW. And who'd they attack? The Young Bucks, right? So the story there makes sense, but New York is their home. They're from the Bronx. Those boys are, are New York bred. And so doing it at the Grand Slam Dynamite, I mean, that's an ideal situation, too. So it's tough to call, Joseph. I'm happy you asked that question. It's a tough, tough situation. But I feel like either way you go about it, it could be it could be good. Um, but I don't know, man. Maybe you want to prolong it to New York, for New York City. Because, you know, in AEW, when you wrestle in your hometown, you actually win, as we have uh, seen last week. And even we saw tonight, FTR did win. It was an audible call, but FTR did win in their hometown of North Carolina. So, you know, look at that, man. Wrestlers winning in their hometown. What a revelation, revelation that is, you know. Man, those guys are going to be fucking over in in New York. I think you want to do it in New York because you're going to have 22,000 people there, your biggest your biggest television show. And I even think that if, 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 if you ask Santana and Ortiz, would you rather win the title at, at Chicago All Out or in your hometown of New York City? Where they've tell you, where they've made it clear that they've scratched and clawed their entire life there. I think they'd rather win the titles in New York. And I think that it would make it a much better moment. So, I, yeah, you, I, you, you, know what else, you know what else I would book for, for uh, Grand Slam, too? And this might be early. This might be a little early, but maybe, just maybe, you do Eddie Kingston versus Mira for the TNT title, and you have Eddie Kingston win in New York. How insane would that be, man? I don't nope. know. You it's don't too, see it happening. You don't see it happening. It's too early for Miro to drop the title. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. But I don't know. I mean, somebody, somebody, I think I brought that up on Twitter. I, I saw that in like through passing uh, recently and I was like, huh, but Eddie Kingston, I'm sure I, I hope he gets a big match regardless in New York. I feel like he's definitely going to knowing how over he is. Mm-hmm. So this is the big talking point of the night, folks. As you guys see in the title down below, this is the biggest talking point of the night. We had Tony Schiavone on the stage. He made a major announcement on a new sh- upcoming show for AEW, and he announced that o- Friday, August 20th, is going to be AEW Rampage, live from the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. 22,000 people for the seating capacity at uh, the United Center. Uh, you're not going to book an AEW show in Chicago two weeks before you're going to be back in Chicago for a pay-per-view weekend and have nothing big, have no big plans for that show. It's just not happening. So something's happening. Something, something is going to happen on August 20th. And I see what you're trying to do there, Tony Khan. If you guys don't know... August 20th Rampage is the day before SummerSlam. So Tony Khan is trying to is going to take away WWE's Thunder for SummerSlam the night before. I see what you're doing there. And then after that, we're not done. After that, Alex Marvez is backstage with Darby Allin and Sting. And he says, AEW's coming to Chicago August 20th for Rampage. What are your thoughts? Darby Allin says... I will be there on August 20th. And he then he then proceeds to say, you know, there's a lot of people in the world claim how how great they are, but the re- the only place that they that, that you could prove it in is AEW. And he says, even if you think you're the best in the world. And I'm like, yup, he's coming. He's coming on August 20th. And it's going to be CM Punk versus Darby Allin at All Out. You, CM Punk's confirmed. And plus, 
Tony Khan was on an interview today, or today I think, with the New York Post promoting the Fight for the Fallen show tonight. And he was asked about CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. And he said, you know, that's a great question, but I can't really comment on that on that right now. So they're, they're coming. They're locked up. They're signed. Punk's coming on August 20th. Punk is going to show up on Rampage August 20th. There's, like I said, you're not going to book Rampage to be in a 22,000 seating arena and not have any big plans. Punk is showing up on August 20th, the night before SummerSlam, and he's going to take away WWE's Thunder the night before SummerSlam. Love it. Absolutely love it, dude. I can't, I can't fucking wait. It's coming. It, it, it's coming. He's coming. He is coming. He's knocking on the door of AEW. Yes, the man, the myth, the legend, C.M. Punk. You heard the chants. You heard him tonight in Charlotte, North Carolina, loud hey. and proud. When the hey. second, the second, the second they announced the United Center, the second you heard CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, and man, oh my gosh, the teases, the teases. AW loves teasing us, huh? It's happening, man. It is absolutely freaking happening. We're getting CM Punk August twentieth. Mark my freaking words. This is not a this is not a lie here. I'm not I'm not working at anybody. It's happening, man. The AEW wouldn't drop teases like that without promising CM Punk on August 20th on Rampage. 22,000 seated arena. I mean, you're having something big planned for that show. There's no way you're having an episode of Rampage and you're just gonna be like, nah, this is gonna be a normal show. No, 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 no. No, 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 AW. You ain't that slick. You ain't that slick. Cause CM Punk is making his Long awaited return to pro wrestling on August 20th at Rampage. And I think it all out, man. We got ourselves a dream match. We got ourselves a dream match at our hands. CM Punk versus Darby Allen, September 5th, all out Chicago at the Now Arena. Boy, oh boy, it feels great to be a pro wrestling fan in 2021, doesn't it? Man, how cool is that for Darby Allen? It's an honor, man. I mean, my God, I don't think you could get yourself put over any other way in any better way. I mean, and, and CM Punk, you know, somebody asked CM Punk a while back on Twitter, who are some of your dream opponents in AEW if you were ever to work there? Darby Allen was one of those men. And so CM Punk probably, he might have personally requested Darby Allen as his first opponent. I mean, you already got a sold out show at the Now Arena for All Out, man. Can you imagine how many, like, more people will probably try to raid that arena? It, it, like if CM Punk is in fact wrestling Darby Allen at all out, which I believe is happening, man, we got to keep a close eye out. Everybody, if you are a pro wrestling fan, or if you're even a disenchanted pro wrestling fan, keep your eyes peeled for August 20th on, on Ra AW Rampage on TNT, man. Keep your eyes peeled. Stay up late, 9 o'clock Central Time for Friday, that August 20th thing, because there's something big that is going to happen. It's going to be so enormous. It's going to be right before SummerSlam. I mean, man, like you mentioned, Joseph, that Tony Khan is just going to steal all the thunder away from SummerSlam. When, when CM Punk shows up on August 20th, people are going to be like, Summer what? Summer what now? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know her. I don't know her. Uh, I, I, I see CM Punk is on TNT. Wait a minute. I'm turning my focus to that. You really think people are going to take talk about SummerSlam after CM Punk showing up in AEW, we've heard all the news reports, all the rumors speculating for, for a couple weeks now, man. And then the same with da Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, I believe, will be at that Arthur Ashe Stadium Grand Slam Dynamite. And that we'll talk about that in a later time once we get more and more closer and closer to that. But, man, it's, it's just what a time, man. What a time. AEW was not messing around. Stop sleeping on all elite wrestling because they are here to stay and they are about to take over as number one in the entire freaking world. Yep. Yep. And uh, I gotta bring it up because it was just on my mind. If you do uh, Punk and Darby Allen at All Out, um, is Punk's debut the main event for All Out? I don't know, man. I... It's tough. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you don't main event with CM Punk. I mean, this is his seven-year seven year return to pro wrestling. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, usually I'm an advocate for the world title being the main event. But honestly, man, if you got CM Punk showing up, I don't know how you don't main event with CM Punk. I really don't. You have to. Yeah. But actually, just, I, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. 
and that was announced tonight too. Tickets are going on sale f- uh, this coming Friday. So you Chicago folks out there, you got once again another man. Chicago, so they got four four future episodes of AEW coming up. Uh, of course, they got Raw on Monday, but phew. yeah, but, let's see. Oh yeah, let's see that sell out. All right, yeah. But, if you're going, if you're going to Raw. God bless your freaking soul, man. Why would you even think about going to Raw when you got all this AEW content at your disposal live and in person and a possible CM Punk appearance too, which is more than likely happening? What is wrong with you if you decide to go to Monday Night Raw after all that? Come on now. Well, God bless me, I guess, because I'm going to Raw August 9th in Orlando on my birthday. So, Well, prayers to you. Prayers to you, <laughs> my friend. I hope you survive the three hours somehow. I'll be fine, but um, um, back to what I was saying. With those tickets going on sale Friday, I gotta make a quick prediction. Uh, that Rampage show is gonna sell out in minutes. I'm oh. telling you right now, twenty-two thousand people. It does not matter. They were gonna if if it was twenty-five people, twenty-five thousand people for All Out, it was gonna sell out. This show uh, for Rampage on the twentieth, tickets going on sale Friday. This show is going to sell out in minutes. I'm telling you right now. So if you're in the Chicago area, like I said, uh, you better hop on those tickets pretty, pretty fucking fast. Absolutely, it's no, no doubt about it. That show is going to sell. Out. I mean, the tease tonight. You don't think people were paying attention? They know exactly what's coming for them August 20th, and I, I'm telling you, I agree, Joseph. In minutes, minutes, I, I'm going to be paying close attention to how fast those tickets go on sale, man. And I, it's going to be real, real quick. I mean, so people, if you're in Chicago, you got it. You got to get on those tickets quick, man. The second they go on sale, get right on it. Absolutely. So. That's the main talking point of the night. You guys see it in the title right there. But we're going to move on to the IWGP US Championship match. We had Hikaleo versus Lance Archer. Solid match. I really think this was a showcase match for Archer before he faces Tanahashi at uh, New Japan Resurgence. But, um, you know, I like this Hikaleo guy. This is the first time I saw him tonight. He's big, he's really athletic. And he's not bad in the ring. I'll give it. The guy is not that bad in the ring. So first night of seeing Hikaleo was, I thought it was a success. He took the elder night after the blackout from Lance Archer. So August 14th, we are going to see uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi go up against Lance Archer for that IWGP United States Championship. It's going down, and I thought this was a solid U.S. title match. Yeah, same here. I thought it was a solid big man matchup. Hikaleo didn't look bad, neither did Archer. I thought both guys squared up well. Um, but yeah, uh, more like you said, just more of a showcase match for Archer uh, before he faces Tanahashi on August 14th at New Japan Resurgence. But yeah, uh, not much to it. Just a solid big man match. Uh, you know, it'd be cool to see more Hikaleo uh, in AEW if, uh, if they're able to have him over uh, for a little while. Uh, he is part of Bullet Club, so we might end up seeing more Bullet Club members on AEW television in the near future. We already got Jay White showing up in Impact. So, I mean, anything's possible with this forbidden door, man. Mm-hmm. Next, very quickly, we had a backstage segment. Alex Marvez was going to interview Cody Rhodes. And really, Cody got out two words. And Malachi Black was right there. They were brawling right in front of Jerry Lynn and right in front of Tony Khan. That was freaking great. They were brawling. They brought out to the stage. Uh, they had Nightmare family members coming out and backing up Cody. Fuego Del Sol was out there for whatever reason. Man, what did Fuego do to Malachi Black? Because this guy got freaking destroyed with the Black Mass. Poor Fuego, dude. I know. I mean, my, why'd you have to do it to Fuego, Black? Why'd you have to do it to Fuego? We love him, but I get it. You're a heel. You're a dastardly heel, and he got to get some heel heat on you. I think that was a good way to probably get a little heat on him. Fuego got fucked. He got fucked up from that, man. My goodness. What a black mass that was. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, there's no other way to book around this match. Malachi Black has to win next week. There's no other There's no other outcome. Malachi, Malachi Black wins next week. I think it's going to happen, too. I, I trust Cody. Cody's put over a lot of other talents in AEW. He's put over Darby. Um, he's put over MJF. I mean, he's, he's put over a lot of other different talents. 
I know he didn't put over QT Marshall, but honestly, do you really see QT Marshall going many places in AEW? I mean, let's be real. He's not a bad wrestler, but he ain't a main event star like Malachi Black. Okay, so, but uh, that's the big match set up for next week. And man, I can't wait. That could very well be a match of the year candidate for sure. I think it's going to be awesome to see. Malachi Black has is, is really had Cody's number leading up into this, but I still think Black is, is winning next week. There's no other way around it. And this is his debut match in AEW. There's no way you can book him to lose his debut match. I mean, come on. Absolutely. Um, we were talking about it last week. We were wondering why this match wasn't wasn't saved for All Out. I think this time last year, Cody Rhodes was getting ready to go to film a series with the Go Big Show. So I think that could be the reason why they're doing this match next week and not at All Out because Cody's getting ready to go film for Go Big Show and he's not going to be there for All Out. But, um, yeah, man, I, I agree. I agree. Al, uh, Malachi Black is going to win unless Fuego, just, uh, unless Fuego Del Sol decides to get himself in there and distract Black and Cody Rhodes wins by a surprise roll-up, which is not happening. But, man, that would make me really pissed off. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, man, I wouldn't mind a Black Fuego Del Sol match somewhere down the line if they wanted to do that. I don't know. We'll see. But. Uh, but no, uh, black, yeah, we, we ain't seen uh, a special interference from Fuego next week. Uh, <laughs> quite, sorry to all the Daly's Place uh, crowd, the, the, the Jacksonville crowd. You won't be seeing Fuego. Uh, he might see him in, a, in an AEW Dark Elevation episode next week. Who knows? But uh, but yeah, man, uh, I'm loving what they're doing now. I'm like, I just love it. You know, I love this feud. This is a great feud, a great way to debut Alistair or uh, Malachi Black excuse me Malachi Black in AEW he's not Alistair Black anymore no 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 it's Malachi Black but uh man it's it's just awesome to see I love seeing you know Tony Khan even talked about I think in an interview about Andrade and uh, Malachi Black about how both guys he, he loves seeing how hungry they are and how you know free they feel you know because you they you can immediately tell like as the soon as they showed up in AEW, you could tell like by their demeanor that they're just so happy to be there, and I'm we're so happy to have them uh, as pro wrestling fans, man. It's just so cool to see. But uh, Malachi Black is is just perfect in this role, and I, I can't wait to see what else uh, is in store for him after this feud with Cody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. So that is happening next week. It should be a awesome, awesome match. And then we had trios match. Uh, we had the Hardy family office. Matt Hardy got a big pop because he's from North Carolina, so good for him. We had Private Party and Angelico against Christian and Jurassic Express. Gotta gotta admit, man, did not really care. Did not really care about this match. I I, I expected one thing coming out of this match, and that was Christian Cage turning on Jungle Boy. We did not get that. Instead, we got the Blade giving. Christian Cage, the brass knucks at the end, running away like a coward heel, and we are getting Christian Cage versus the Blade next week on Dynamite. And it was a, it was a whatever six man tag. It was fine for what it was, I guess. I don't really have much to say about it. Yeah, I mean, I thought for what it was, it was, it was pretty fun. Uh, you know, Jungle Boy is so over, and it's great to see uh, Jungle Boy, another one of the biggest rising stars in pro wrestling, man. Uh, but yeah, not much to it. Uh, I'm kind of ready for them to just kind of move past all this stuff with Hardy Family Office. I'm just, I'm kind of over it by now. And uh, I, I really want to, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess they're maybe still setting it up later, but um, I really hope they, they end up pulling the trigger with Jungle Boy and Christian Cage. I feel like that's got to be what you do with these two guys. I mean, I feel like that's the only route. Cause I mean, what else is going to be the outcome of this whole thing? I mean, what, what's the, what's the end to it? You know, I feel like you have no other route, but Christian Cage and Jungle Boy going one-on-one -on -one and Christian Cage being the heel of course. And, Jungle Boy being the over babyface. So, but yeah, standard six man tag, not much to it. Uh, the babyfaces win, and that's all you got there. Yeah, they even teased Christian Cage being in the top five rankings. I'm like, hell no, dude. Do not tease me that Christian Cage is going to be challenging for the world title at All Out because I I'm telling you right now, um, it needs to be Christian Cage uh, as a heel against Jungle Boy because I'm telling you right now, uh, if you do Christian versus Kenny Omega for the world title at All Out, uh, it's not going to work. That's not a pay-per-view worthy world title match in front of 10,000 plus people. I'm, I love Christian. I think he's been doing some good things in AEW so far, but 
he does not need to challenge for that world title at all. I don't even think I would not be happy with that. And I don't think other people would be happy with that either. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think it's your most ideal match. I feel like, um, you know, Orange Cassidy, him also being the top five, I feel like that would be a better main event or at least a better world title match to book for Kenny Omega at a lot. Because, I mean, we all know Orange Cassidy's so over with uh, AEW. I mean, he's one of the most over young talents in this entire company. So, you know, that crowd will go absolutely wild for Cassidy. I mean, at some point, he's due a one-on-one match anyway. So, that'd probably be more ideal than, rather than going with Christian and uh, and Kenny Omega. But, yeah, I feel like it's better if you just have Christian Cage turn heel uh, before All Out and you have him go up one-on-one with Jungle Boy. You put Jungle Boy over and it's it's just the it's the past passing it every passing the torch on to the future and he and it's, you know the you see it a lot in pro wrestling I feel like we could see that again here mm-hmm. absolutely dude so we had that and then we had Julia Hart and Thunder Rosa this match lasted four minutes no disrespect to these women really like both of them by the way. Congrats to Thunder Rosa she's officially all elite that is a great thing to see. Um, but this match went four minutes. I really did not care about it because I just wanted to see the main event. But I'm just happy Thunder Rosa's all lead. That is a great move from Tony Khan and a great pickup for the women's division. I'm I'm definitely a, par- a proud member of the Thunder Army, man. And uh, that news that broke with Thunder Rosa being officially becoming all lead, amazing stuff, man. I'm so happy she's an AEW man. She is such a vital part of this women's division. And uh, I mean, it would have been foolish for AEW just let her go and not end up signing with AEW. But I feel like, you know, ever since she had been competing in AEW, all the signs pointed to her um, joining AEW. You know, you could tell she just loved the environment. She loved being there. And uh, and I thought she looked good. Uh, She was definitely super over. She got a big reception from the Charlotte crowd tonight. And you love to see it, man. I mean, people love some Thunder Rosa, man. It's it's, it's awesome. She's definitely one of my favorites by far. I love me some Thunder Rosa. And I can't wait to see – what she has uh, in store for uh, for AEW and for the women's division. Of course, absolutely. So, before we get into this main event, we got next week's AEW show, Homecoming, back at Daly's Place. Last time for a long time, Excalibur keeps saying. Um, we got Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. Obviously, that's going to be your main event next week. Should be freaking awesome. Miro... God's favorite champion is back in action, defending the TNT title against big shoddy Lee Johnson. So, uh, quick thoughts and prayers for Lee Johnson before next week's uh, destruction from Miro. Um, We got the Bunny one-on-one with Layla Hirsch and what they're calling uh, an Eliminator NWA women's title match. Is Serena Deep still a champion? She is. Okay. All right. I was wondering about that. So um, I thought she had dropped it for some reason. So, but we're getting the Bunny versus Layla Hirsch next week, and we're getting Christian Cage versus the Blade. So, not your stacked dynamite lineup like it's been the past four weeks, but should be a good show nonetheless. And, yeah, then, mm-hmm. and then the main event uh, labor number two for Jericho. We had. The pain maker against uh, the death match king, the death match legend, Nick Gage. Nick Gage did not, on my end of the TV, Nick Gage did not come out to much of a reaction. And he wasn't really that over in the beginning, but towards at the end of the match, uh, the dude was over as hell, dude. So they were chanting MDK, MDK. Uh, the murder death kill gang is what he calls it. So. Man, I love Nick Gage. I really do. He's he's gotten me so over these past few days. Yeah, man, he, that dude is insane. But he's insane in the best way possible. He really is. I mean, I I honestly hope one day I get to meet him in person just to see what he's like. Uh, you know, one on one, man. I hope he doesn't kill me. <laughs> I, <just laughs> hope, I hope he doesn't challenge. I hope he doesn't get me in a death match. I, I was like, dude, no, I'm good. I like watching it. I don't want to partake. It's okay. But man, uh. I don't know how we could go over this. This was just freaking brutal, just chaos, man. I mean, 
two weeks in a row we've seen just some bloody wars happening in, in pro wrestling and the AEW ring. I mean, we had Lance Archer versus John Moxley in the Texas Death Match last week. Tonight we got Nick Gage versus Chris Jericho in a no rules match with freaking panes of glass and glass tubes, light to I mean, just all all the death match, just all the death match weapons, just every every one, every one of the pizza cutters. I mean, it's just like God. I mean. I'm like freaking watching this and I'm cringing, but at the same time, it's like, I'm like, gosh, this is amazing though, man. Like, this is the best. <laughs> this Beautiful. is like great. I mean, freaking, we saw Jericho hit a freaking Frankenstein off the top rope on Nick Gage through a pane of glass set up between two chairs. I mean, like, what is happening in pro wrestling these days, man? It's insane. But this was an excellent main event. I mean, I know not everybody's a deathmatch fan. You know, I understand not everybody's going to be, you know, super into death matches, but I think the Charlotte crowd was definitely a, a de- some death match fans tonight uh, for sure. Um, but this was great. Jericho survives. Uh, he hits the hits the Judas effect on uh, on Nick Gage after hitting him with uh, two big stacks of freaking light tubes. And uh, but MJF wouldn't wait long. Once again, he grabs the mic, announces labor number three for Chris Jericho. What is labor number three? Well, they took it all the way back to the beginning days of AEW Dynamite back in 2019. And Jericho had uh, mentioned, mentioned a, a certain pro wrestler from back in the day that he used to have beef with. And uh, it looks like that rivalry is going to be renewed uh, for the next labor as, yes, Juventud Guerrera, Hoovy, is making his return to pro wrestling to go one-on-one with Chris Jericho in the third labor of the five labors of Jericho. What in the world? Juventud Guerrero, one of the biggest luchadors to ever come out of pro wrestling, man, a, D- a WCW native, facing Chris Jericho in labor number three. I mean, again, man, 2021 is an insane, crazy year of pro wrestling. I mean, who would have thought we'd see Juventud Guerrero on our television screens in 2021? It's a, it's a, it's wild, man. It's just all wild. But I'm here for it. Uh, I'm hoping Hooven too can still go uh, in the stands. I have not seen that guy wrestle in a very, very long time, so I don't know what his status uh, looks like in pro wrestling. But uh, he's next up for Chris Jericho and the five labors of Jericho. So uh, that's that's going to be interesting. Don't forget, Jericho has to win by that match by hitting a top rope maneuver. So if it's a Spanish fly or whatever, I don't know if Jericho can hit a Spanish fly, but I don't know. The guy, I mean, the fact that he's 50 plus years old and he's still wrestling, I mean, like, and he doesn't have the best physique, granted, but that, I mean, still, it doesn't matter. He's still performing at a, at a pretty high level for his age. Who knows, man? I mean, we've seen some crazy things already happen in pro wrestling. So I feel like a Spanish fly off the top rope from Chris Jericho may not be that out of this realm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anything could happen. Maybe he's taking lessons from Pac on how to hit the red arrow. <laughs> oh, my God. Chris Jericho hitting a black arrow. I could you even imagine that? Hey, let, let's play about <laughs> imagination for WWE 2K19 or something. You know, like we can we, we can probably do some editing there. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! But uh, who man? Who would have thought? Who again? Juventud Guerrera. Uh, Hoovy is what I called him on social media. I have never seen this dude wrestle before. Do I have? To, should I go look it up? He, he was pretty he was pretty fun to watch uh, in the in the WCW days. So I, I recommend going back. You can even go back and watch his match with uh, with Chris Jericho. I believe I heard I believe yeah Jericho was the one to defeat Hoovy, which is why, where, where he uh, unmasked because he used to wear a mask and Jericho was the reason he unmasked. So there is a very big story there between those two guys. Oh man, but this was a beautiful. Beautiful main event tonight. I loved the blood, the carnage. Nick Gage is an animal, dude. I love that guy. I, I've gotten so, like I said, I've gotten so over with him the past two nights from him showing up last week to the GCW match with Matt. Did you watch that match yet? I actually haven't. I've seen the clips. I've, I've definitely seen the clips on Twitter. But, uh, yeah, man, mass amounts of respect for Matt Cardona. I mean, my gosh, man. I mean, he, you know, it's like, Screw Roman Reigns. Screw a Kenny Omega. Matt Cardona is the most hated man in pro wrestling right now. I don't think anybody has more heat than Matt Cardona does when it comes to the GCW audience. Like, that dude is so hated. I mean, you saw all the car. I saw all the, all the beer bottles being thrown at him after, like, the second he won that title from Nick Gage, man. 
he is so hated right now, and he's just living rent free in all these people's heads. He's loving every second of it. Good for him, dude. Good, yeah. good for him. You know. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Love it, but we who would have thought, like I said in the beginning, who would have thought that we've seen light tubes, um, glass doors, and pizza cutters on on um on a W Dynamite television, man. Absolutely insane. I love the main event, dude. I really did. And MJF it was, it was amazing. MJF on commentary again saying, uh, cut him up, gauge, uh, make him bleed was hilarious, dude. Absolutely hilarious. Yeah. It, it, MJF, I mean, no matter where you get him, whether it's on commentary or on uh, uh, on the mic in the middle of the ring, MJF is going to deliver in every aspect, man. That that dude is so great at what he does. I mean, the guy is just gold. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And guys, that is going to wrap up tonight's Fight for Fallen Review here on the channel. Thank you all for joining us here tonight, man. What a month it's been for AEW in July. What a month it's been for the Big Fight Field channel. Uh, this is our last big review before Smack. We got SmackDown on Friday. And then we hit August. We hit August, man. Unbelievable. Um, got a lot of great stuff coming up, man. Like I said, Monday. This is what I'm calling the six-week period. The stretch to SummerSlam and All Out. All Out is coming up very soon. We got some big videos coming here on the channel as we get on the road to SummerSlam. All Out. Uh, we got a vlog coming up soon from Orlando, Florida. Some big. We got Rampage debuting soon. You're going to be here on Friday nights now. How do you feel? That's an announcement. That feels great. That's an announcement. Wes, Wesley Williams will be here on Friday nights to cover Rampage. Double the dose. Double the dose of Joseph and Wesley, the dynamic duo, man. I mean, you love to see it. Why wouldn't you want more of us, man? You're going to get us twice in, one, in all the weeks coming up. Uh, at once Rampage does debut, man. Dynamite on Wednesdays, Rampage on Fridays, man. You love to see it, man. I can't wait to cover that August, August 20th episode, man. Because remember, people, keep your eyes open. Keep them open wide. Keep your eyes close because August 20th, man, we see the return of you know who, Mr. Best in the World, Mr. GTS, CM Punk, man. Keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be amazing, man. I can't wait to cover both Dynamite and Rampage starting August 13th, man. It's going to be great, man. And AEW coverage. I love covering me some AEW, man. I love doing it alongside the best partner in the IWC and Joseph Kyle, man. We are here. Big fight. Phil giving you the best play by play reviews of AEW diamond. And we're going to be doing the same with AEW rampage starting August 13th. Be there or be square. Listen, people, you don't know it and you don't know it either. Wes, but we might get a second person to cover rampage on the channel. So there's a tease for you right there. Not gonna say who right now, but we'll we'll t we'll get the announcement closer to the date. But um, we got that coming up, man. Some great times here on the Big Fight Fuel channel. You're gonna want to be subscribed. Comment down below your thoughts about tonight's AEW Fight for the Fallen show. Hit the like button if you like what you heard from myself and Wesley Williams. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Colin underscore Joseph. Wes, where can they follow you, dude? We already know big underscore West 18 on Twitter. That is B I G underscore W E S one eight on Twitter. I cover a W dynamite uh, weekly every Wednesday night. And uh, I'm again, I'm going to try to get back on uh, tweeting about elevation, whatever I can on Mondays. I might even add an AW dark review sometimes on Tuesdays. Now that my Tuesday is open. Now I'm no longer doing uh, NXT coverage. Uh, thanks to good old Benny Mac, you know, for ruining uh, that brand for me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Vince. Appreciate it, Bruce. Awesome. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you'll find me covering AEW, and you'll you'll find me just covering, you know, covering my own life, you know, my own personal life if you're interested in that. So, and, hey, um, I looked on my Twitter tonight, 16 followers away from 700, only 16 away, people. Get those numbers up. I am almost at 700 followers on Twitter. For those of you who have already followed me, I really appreciate you. I really do. I love you so much. Thank you for you know, being willing to listen to what I have to say, because you know I'm always going to be telling the truth. And you know Conlon underscore Joseph on Twitter and on Instagram. He's always going to be spreading the truth on social media and right here on the reviews, man, because we speak nothing but honest, truthful 
facts and you will never hear anything else from us, man. Give us a like, comment down below what your favorite part about Fight for the Fallen was tonight. And man, it's going to be fun. Man, August is going to be another blockbuster month for uh, our channel here on Big Fight Feel and for AEW, man. So stay tuned for all that. Thank you guys so much. Like the button, like hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe to Big Fight Feel, get those numbers up as well. And we will see you next Wednesday night for AEW Homecoming. Yes, sir. We will see you next Wednesday, and I will see you for SmackDown on Friday. So you guys have a good night. Stay safe, and as always, stay classy, man.